This is actually the second time I filmed this video, so hopefully it goes well this time. Hi everybody, today I am taking a look at the Bloom Vision Planner. This is the hardcover 2018-2019 Vision Planner and the cover is marble. They actually have two other cover patterns that you can choose from. I ordered this on Amazon and it has prime shipping and it was like $26.95 or something like that on Amazon. Came here in Amazon short order, which was awesome. You can also order it from their website and there it is a little bit more expensive, $28.95, but you can get generally get a 10% discount code. I think it's 10% if you are shopping with them for the first time. And if you order over $60 worth of stuff, it's free shipping as well. So that's a good thing to know. It's a August 2018 through July 2019 start. So if you're still trying to figure out if you want to do a mid-year planner swap, this one doesn't start for another couple of weeks. So this might be a good one to think about. So let's take a look at the planner itself. Now, first of all, the cover is like chipboard, super hard <laughs> and covered in like a plasticky kind of laminated -y feel surface with the marble and the marble, if you can see it on camera, the marbling in it is gold foil. So it's very, very pretty. And then it has the 2018, 2019 dates and the little flower logo on it. The covers are protected with these gold cover protector thingies on the front and the back. And this is what the back looks like. And then the coil is a single coil. This is my favorite kind of coil binding. It's smaller than the ones I'm used to. Now I get a bigger planner than this, but I've made no secret of the fact here on the channel that there are some planners I absolutely love, but I hate the wire O coil binding. And this particular binding is the one that I do like. I have a lot more of an easy time, like flipping it around or laying it flat and not having trouble at all with like pages crunching up or everything, which is why these, these coils are, are my bae if I was going to steal verbiage from the young people. So the size of the planner, including the binding is 7.5 inches wide and nine inches tall, which means it's similar in size to the Erin Condren. This puppy here, this is the Erin Condren. So if you put it here and you put this guy on top, you can see right here, it's hard to see with the light. Let's see if I can decompress it a bit. It's a small amount of height difference. And then in terms of width difference, it is exactly the same width. The big difference though is in the fatness. So this Erin Condren planner is massively fat. This Bloom Daily planner is at least half as fat as the Erin Condren and the cover because it's cardboard instead of the cover is chipboard instead of laminated cardstock. The cover is way thicker, so that adds some of the thickness to this planner, but in terms of number of pages, it's way less. All right, let's get into the planner itself. So you open it up and on the inside of here, you have the Bloom logo with their like acronym for Bloom. And then here it's the cover page with like your information and everything. And this one actually does something different. Most cover pages, if they just give you a spot for your name, that's generally it. But this one actually gives you a spot for a mission statement for your entire year, which I think is very cool. The paper feels a little bit thinner than the paper in say an Erin Condren or an Inkwell Press. I will test it at the end of this video for pen testing. Paper is nice and smooth. It's bright white. And according to the website is 100 GSM. I never know how the measurements actually measure up. Getting into the front here, we have a letter from the founders and all of their social media info. And then here is a section on how to use this planner. We've had conversations on this channel about the how to use this planner pages. And I'm just, they're not, they're not my thing. I generally feel like they, I could use just extra note pages, but this one is very brief and it's mostly visual. It's not really giving you instructions on how to plan, but mostly just pointing out different features on the different layouts, which that's pretty cool. This color scheme so far seems to be very pretty, like a kind of a soft, like warm kind of peachy pink and a light brown. It's kind of soothing, very mellow. So next we have the yearly view 2018 from January to December and then 2019 from January to December. And then here is some goal setting stuff for the year. So this gives you room to create five goals for 2018, 2019, things to look forward to, things you would like to try, things you would like to read, places to visit with a check box next to them or a check circle, which I like. It's like, I want to visit these places, but now I'm actually going to go visit these places. Things to improve upon and things to be grateful for. So that's for the year. And then this is an area to do a vision board with a little bit of like inspiration on what to put on here and how to put it on here. I've tried doing vision boards in the past. 
Generally speaking, I can't ever seem to take myself seriously enough to do this, but if you want to do it but are not sure where to start, something like this could be very handy. Now this section I think is super neat. This is a weekly scheduling template to give you an idea to create your ideal week. Now you could use this one of two ways. I counted and there are 26 total slots here. So you could do this one of two ways. You could use this for like a 24 hour period or what I would do if I was gonna use this planner is I would actually take each of these and do two separate weeks. Some of you guys know that I share custody week on week off and when I work from home, so the weeks I do have my kids look radically different from the weeks that I don't. Ideally, and this is a mom thing, but I would love to have four of these or maybe even just one extra one so that I could do the weeks without my kids, the weeks with my kids during the school year and the weeks with my kids during the summer because again, things look different from there to there. But in general, having these two weekly scheduling templates, it's very, very cool. And I could make massive use out of these. You have two pages of contacts. They give you space for name, address, phone, email, birthday, and notes. Here is a 2018, 2019 bucket list. It's basically a note sheet, but at the beginning has a checkbox in front of every single line. And then here is a notes page. And I don't know if you can see it very well on camera, but it's actually lightly divided into two columns. So you could write straight across or you could divide it into two if you wanted to. So there's five of these notes pages at the beginning and then we get to the month and this is the monthly vision and I, I'm assuming this is the same for every month but we'll check as we flip through. This gives you personal growth, relationships, health and fitness, family and home, other, work, school, finances, fun and adventure and then it says bloom in August. You could use this to write goals for the month or you could use this to write reflections at the end of the month. And then for the monthly divider you have a hand lettered quote. I, it's, I know it's hand lettered because I read it on the website. Divider page is not cardstock or anything. It's the same paper as the rest of the planner. The tab is laminated just to the edge of where it gets into the paper. Basic monthly spread, nice and big, plenty of room. The weekends have a slight tint to them. Women's Equality Day is on here, so that's interesting. We'll see what other holidays they put on here. Then we also have on here the previous month and the upcoming month on the calendar and then a notes column. And up here they have, they said on the website, they have a monthly challenge every month for something for you to focus on. And so for August, the monthly challenge is carve out five to 10 minutes of quiet time for yourself every day this month. This spread intrigues me for a couple of reasons. There are things about it I'm looking at that I like and there are things I'm not, that are not my personal taste. And I should remind you all, these planner reviews are all from my subjective point of view, my opinion. We have August across the top. We have a spot for a weekly focus. Here's your monthly calendar of August notes and goals. And then you have your columns. It's a vertical style, but it is done in the style of say the hourly from Aaron Condren, but with no hours or the Inkwell Press classic where it's the lines, but no times or anything like that. I really like that. The Get to Work book does this too. And if I was going to switch from an Aaron Condren planner to one, I would switch to one that has a layout like this most likely. So at the top, you have the day and the date running across the top and the bottom, there's a rectangle that you could use for all sorts of things. And which they give you a helpful reminder here along the bottom, it says meals, exercise, inspiration, notes, memories, ideas, gratitude. So you could pick one. This right here would, is cute the first time I'm looking at it. I think it would piss me off the more I started using this planner because I'd feel like I needed to cover it up with washi. Kind of like when I started using the colorful hourly from Erin Condren last year, I wound up having to cover that thing with fucking washi tape to cover up all of the Dalmatian print on the sides. Like this would be the same thing. I would have to cover it with washi every week, which could force me to learn a way to do a new layout. But at the same time, sometimes I'd rather not use that much washi tape. One of the other things he that's interesting here, they've got two items on this spread that people like to use stickers for. So it could be really awesome if you want to, I keep saying awesome. I'm sorry. I sound so awesome shooters and awesome friends doing awesome things. If you don't want to buy a lot of stickers, but you like these things, this could be really great for you. But if you like to color coordinate, things like that, this could be, or not use these, this could also irritate you. And those two things are the hydration tracker along the bottom and the weekend banner over the weekend. Both of these look very similar to a lot of the stickers that people use, but they're naturally in the planner. I like to color coordinate. I like to make sure that my planner matches. It's all matchy matchy with whatever colors I pick during the month. And I don't like the planner to dictate the color. So there's way too much color on this planner for me to enjoy in the first place. Even if I covered up a lot of this with headers, I'd have to cover this weekend banner up too. I also don't use a hydration tracker. I track my liquid somewhere else. So that would be covered up in washi tape for me. But if you 
if you want the simplicity of not having to worry about those things, then go for it. The other irritation is even though the weekends are the same size, the Saturday and Sunday are the same size, there's nothing else that distinguishes them from the rest of the week. I will go into my usual spiel of not everybody's weekend is Saturday and Sunday. Some people work and have Thursday and Friday off, or they have Tuesday and Wednesday off, or they have split days off. You know, anybody who works in retail, anybody who works in grocery stores, anybody who works in hospitals, like a lot of people do not have a standard Monday through Friday nine to five work week. And whenever you did, whenever a planner makes explicit when the weekend is, I feel like it makes it a little less practical for people whose days off are not Saturday and Sunday. And I'm speaking from experience because I worked for grocery stores for almost 20 years and only for a three month period in that entire time did I have Saturday and Sunday off and I paid for it every week with my boss being mad at me. The other thing on this spread is that there is a positive quote up here on top. This one is from Gary Vaynerchuk. Moving forward, it's the same layout, different positive quote, but all the same stuff. It's also a Monday start. And then we get to the monthly vision, which is the same thing, except it says bloom in September and we have a new quote. I just flipped through really quick to double check and it looks like there are some different religious holidays in here. There are the traditional kind of Christian holidays like Easter and Christmas and all that. There are Jewish holidays, there are Muslim holidays. Kwanzaa is in here and they've got like the first day of winter and the first day of autumn and some of those which are tied to the um, pagan calendar although they're not called like Beltane or Solstice or any of those Samhain those holidays. The other thing I'll mention I looked in October and I do appreciate that in October they have Columbus Day slash Indigenous Peoples Day. There are some places in the United States that have turned Columbus Day into Indigenous Peoples Day and I, like I live in California Columbus Day is not treated as a holiday here so it's just, it's good to know that the holidays, some, some planners either stick purely to like U.S. and Christian holidays. This one does not have every like international holiday, but it is nice to see it having a more of a mix. is the end of the monthly and weekly section of the planner gets you all the way through July 2019 and a couple of things to note one the color scheme stays the same throughout the planner the decorations on top stay the same throughout the planner and the quotes on both the weekly spreads on the dividers and in the challenges are all very positive like happy type things which is generally what happens but I think the amount of like raw, raw positivity in this planner would irritate me after a while. And I know some people love that and need that, but I've made, I've made it, I've talked about on my podcast before about how there comes a point when like a lot of the positive quotes and things you see floating around Instagram start to ring kind of shallow to me. I don't know if I could face that so much in my planner every day, like monthly page, like the monthly dividers. I'm used to that. Almost every planner, most planners seem to do something like this, but also every week and every month having something might be too much for me. But if you're su you're somebody who loves to be surrounded by that kind of positivity, then this may be right up your alley. The color scheme is stunning, but I prefer neutral planners. So this would not be for me. If you if you like this color scheme and you don't want to decorate too much or you don't want to change the colors too much, this could be really awesome for you. But I like a, a very, very neutral color scheme because I like to put my own colors on top of it. If I was going to stick with the color scheme, this might be one I would stick with because this I've used this color scheme before and I love it. It's so soft and pretty and soothing. Whew, it is very beautiful. I'm not hating on the color scheme at all. I think it's a beautiful color scheme. I just don't want that the same for an entire year. Then we get to the end and we have important dates for next year. So this is for future planning. And I really like that they included this. I think that this is rad. So it has August, 2019 through July, 2020, basically setting you up for what you're gonna put into your next planner if you get another planner like this or whatever. And then on the back, you have highlights. It's all of the same categories that are at the beginning of every month. But this time it says 2018, 2019 in review. What were some of your most memorable moments from the whole year? in each of these categories. And then that's the end of the actual planner. Then here they have another section talking about their vision and then a pocket. Now the pocket feels really sturdy. It's super like it's glued underneath this section of the cover. Very sturdy here. It's like paper, but like laminated paper, like hard, like, like more than cardstock, harder than cardstock. And then it's hooked into the 
the coil. So it opens up a little bit, gives you some room, and it's it doesn't accordion out too much, but it is very sturdy. And that's the back of the planner. So the next thing I'm going to do is a pen test. So I have three pens to test. I have a Target gel roller as a gel pen, a fine liner. This is the Pilot V Razor Point fine liner and a Tombow dual brush marker. All three of these pens are pens I use in my various planners and they give you kind of a the spectrum of the kinds of pens I use to see whether or not they're going to work in this planner or not. So let's give it a try. Don't forget that I have a heavy hand. So looking at this, the gel pen super left that braille like ridges. Like I can basically read the word with my finger if I could read it that way, but the whole word indented through. The fine liner did not show, did not indent very much, but it did shadow through quite a bit in some spots. The Tombow on the other hand did really great. Like I don't even barely see the shadow. So that's interesting. Overall, let's talk about this planner. Now, what are the things I like about it? I like the slim profile. I feel like this would be an easy planner to take with you to like work or to throw in your bag, like the protected corners and how skinny it is. is not some massive fucking like gigantic planner that's gonna give you back problems. Not that that's ever happened to me, except for maybe once. Objectively, I think the colors are absolutely beautiful. I like a lot of the features in it, especially that week that like ideal week section that's awesome I really like the layout of it the things I'm not such a big fan of the paper is not as nice as I would like while the colors are beautiful there's just so much going on in these weekly spreads with like the weekend banners and all of that that for me that would just be a pain in the ass to try and cover up so I could put my stamp on it. I also have already said that the like relentless positivity of this planner is a little bit more than I would want in my weekly planner. The other issue that could be in this planner for some people is that there's only five note pages. So there's not a lot of extra space, which is why it has the slim profile. So it depends on what you want. That's a big thing. And that's a big part of this planner. Who do I think this planner is perfect for? It's not perfect for me. There's a lot of things about this planner that would make me irritated as fuck as I was using it, but I can see this planner being useful for a lot of people. For one, for people who don't need too much with their planner. This is a fairly simple planner and it's a very skinny planner. So for people who are trying to be kind of minimal with it, this is excellent. Not just because of the the, the slim size of it or the fact that, you know, it's it's got the basics and not much more. The other thing is that if you don't want to buy a lot of stickers, if you don't want, if you just want to use pen and be fine with it, or just use a little bit of decoration, then this planner is already kind of cute with like its decorations along the top, its banners, all of those things. You don't have to add too much for this to be a pretty planner. You don't have the time or you don't have the money or you don't have the interest to do a lot of the bells and whistles, but you like the look of it. This kind of does it for you, which is really cool. I really like how the goal setting in this planner is not too in your face. It's not overly complicated. It's not complicated condescending at all and it's fairly easy to keep up with I think that doing the initial first couple pages in here and then keeping up with that one single page every month plus your regular planning honestly for somebody who wants to get into the general idea of goal setting this is not very intimidating and I think would be excellent for people who get nervous when they get a planner that has like six pages of how you're supposed to use it in the beginning and then eight pages of worksheets to help you deal with your life and again not hating on that but just saying for some people that shit is overwhelming and I think that this planner breaks it down very simply in a way that is manageable that you can keep up with I think it's a little bit more expensive than I would probably pay for a planner like this but at the same time if you can get the free shipping or order it off of prime the convenience of it is worth a little bit of extra money so a little bit more price than I think what you're getting, but convenience wise is super worth it. I would not personally use this and I will likely be giving this away sometime this month. So keep your eyes open for that. In the meantime, why don't you tell me in the comments below what you thought of this planner? And is there other planners you want me to take a look at? Because apparently that's what I do now. <laughs> At least right now, I'm on a roll checking out all these mid-year planners. I'm looking at a bunch I've never looked at before, and I'm excited because I finally have a plum, plum, I can't even say it, plum paper planner on the way to take a look at hopefully next week. So we'll see how that goes. Let me know in the comments if there's some you want me to look at. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.